All right, welcome everybody. So in this video, I want to take a look at another type of transformation in R2, uh, namely a translation. And we have not seen translations prior to now because translations are actually not linear transformations. So we can't actually represent a translation um, as a matrix map in R2. Um, but let's see how this would go. So let's say for, ex for example, we have this triangle in blue and we would like to translate this triangle two units to the left and three units up so that we wind up with this orange triangle that we have um, above. So if I wanna go two units to the left, that means we're gonna subtract two from the X1 coordinate and then we're gonna go three units up in the vertical direction. So we're gonna add three to the X2 coordinate. So really important observation here is that when we do translations, we actually are adding vectors together. So I'm gonna take this one one, I'm going to go two units to the left, that means subtract two from the X1 coordinate, three units up, that means we add three to the X2 coordinate. And that maps the vertex at one one over here to the vertex now at minus one four. And we do this um, for each of the points, the three vertices that we have in our triangle. So mapping the other two, um, this one over here goes three over two up and it winds up at one four. And then this vertex that started at two three goes two over and three up and winds up at zero six. And now we get this translation of, of the blue triangle and it gets shifted two units left, three units up and winds up at this orange triangle. So translation acts differently than say scaling and shearing and rotations in that those transformations we could represent with matrix multiplication. And so when we wanted to compose those operations, we could just multiply the corresponding matrices. Translation acts as vector addition. Uh, and so we're gonna have to be a little bit more sneaky about how we incorporate translations in with the other transformations we've been discussing. Okay, so let's just recap where we are with the different transformations we've looked at so far. Um, operations such as shearing, scaling, rotations, um, these are linear transformations and these operations we can represent with matrix multiplication. Um, translations are not linear transformations and so those we can represent by adding vectors together rather than multiplying a matrix and a vector. So the question is, what if I want to compose translations with some of these other transformations that we've seen? Because we've seen that, for example, if I want a, a scaling rotation, um, when I scale in on that triangle, it actually shifts it as well a little bit. So maybe I wanna scale something and then kind of shift it back a little bit. So how can we compose translations with these other transformations? And one way to do this is to introduce what's called homogeneous coordinates. So although we're working with transformations in R2, we're gonna add a third coordinate to this point. Um, namely, we're gonna give it a Z coordinate that's equal to one. So we can think about this as, uh, for example, Here's our point x, y, that's in the x1, x2 plane. And giving it homogeneous coordinate just means we're thinking about it one unit up from the x1, x2 plane. Um, so therefore, we're gonna say that each point x, y in R2 has homogeneous coordinate x, comma, y, comma, one. So we add an additional coordinate and that means our matrix transformations are gonna now be represented with three by three matrices as opposed to two by two matrices. Okay, so let's see how we can define this translation by matrix multiplication. And let's consider um, one of the other vertices of this triangle that we've been thinking about, um, the vertex at three, one. So if we were to apply this translation, um, shifting it to the left by two units and up by three, We've seen that we can add the vector three, one to the vector minus two, three, and that's gonna map us to the vector at one, four correctly. Um, but here we've got an addition um, operation. If instead we introduce 
homogeneous coordinates. So instead of representing this point as 3, 1, we represent it as 3, 1, 1. We add this extra um, coordinate 1. Then our matrix for this translation, we're going to have the identity matrix, but the vertical, excuse me, the horizontal translation, I enter as the first value, the first entry in the third column that we're adding to this vector, uh, to this matrix. So this minus two corresponds to a shift to the left by two units. Um, then the second entry in this third column that we add, um, it's gonna tell us how far and what direction are we vertically shifting things. So in this case, we're going up three units vertically. So that's why we have a three here. And then the last entry is always going to be a one. So this is telling us the, ver the horizontal translation and the vertical translation. And we can check when we apply this to the homogeneous coordinate at three, one, one, applying this vector matrix vector product gives us um, three minus two equal to one as the new X one coordinate one plus three, which is equal to four as the new X two coordinate and the homogeneous coordinate one hasn't changed. And in fact, we're not gonna be all that interested in this because it, at the end of the day, we're gonna plot this in R2, paying attention to just the first two coordinates. So let's state this result more generally. Namely, if I want to apply a translation by H units in the horizontal direction, K units in the vertical direction, then we introduce homogeneous coordinates. And for a point x, y, we add a homogeneous coordinate of one, and then we apply the matrix over here, which we have um, the two by two identity matrix. Um, and then we add an additional row and column. And that extra column, the first entry is the horizontal shift, the second entry is the vertical shift, and the third entry is the one. And in the last row, we just have zero, zero, one. Um, and you can check that as a result of this product, we're gonna shift X by H units, we're gonna shift Y by K units, and the homogeneous coordinate has not shifted. And at the end of the day, we're just gonna plot the X1 and the X2 coordinates that we get out of this matrix.